Yeah. It says, in what cases is supply when the hive is the utensil with windows? However, if it was broken and stuffed with straw, or if the window was covered, what is considered covered? When there are no when there is no window the size of a uh, tefak, and an olive sized piece of corpse is located underneath the underneath the hive, utensils directly below the hive, as deep as one can go, become tame. If the olive sized piece is above the hive, the utensils directly above the olive sized piece up to the sky become tame. Thank you. If the olive sized piece is inside the hive or the, or, or the, or the house inside the hive and the house become tame. Um, cat. If the if the hive is a handbreadth above the ground and there's tumor below, in the house or the house side of the hive, everything becomes tummy except for what is above the hive. And if the tumor is above the hive, utensils directly above the tumor up to the sky become tummy. If the hive fills the entire house, there is no less than a handbreadth of space between the hive and the joist. And there is tumor inside the hive, the house becomes tummy. If there's tumor inside the house, anything inside the hive remains tahor because it is the way of Tuma to exit, but not the way to enter. This law applies whether the hive is standing upright or whether it's lying on its side, and whether there is no one there, no, there is no hive, I'm sorry, whether there is one hive or there are two. Okay. Okay, Mr. Yud, more configurations. Okay, so now our um, our here is standing inside the doorway of the house. The ein beina lebeina mashkof pasach tefach. And so I'm, I'm being attacked over here. Let me get these guys out of here. Okay, come on, come on. Here you go. That's a good boy. Okay, you're next. Come on, come on, come on. Go ahead, go ahead. Go, so we're go. On the pool. go, go. Go not behind the door, outside the door. <laughs> That's killing me. Come on, guys. No, no, no. All right, how's it go? How's it go? What's the tree? What? Give them a treat. Give them a treat. You want a treat? You didn't have a yeah. treat. Go get a treat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're all laughing. I know. <laughs> uh, Why do they have to pick my desk? I don't understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, no worries. Hard... Okay. So we've got okay. to. So it's inside the doorway, and it's uh, and the so it's standing upright in the doorway, and between it and the mashkof is less than a, is less than a tefach, which means effectively it's flush. When it's less right. than a tefach, that's called flash. Okay, and it join and it can join with the walls of the house to form a, to form an ohel of its own. So, it, so even though it's a key, it can join with the walls to to form an ohel. Okay, um, and and furthermore, the uh, the, the we what's 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 not stated over here is it's um. I think I think the important thing is that it's actually blocking the whole doorway. I think is the um, um, yeah that that's that, I think it's it's got to, it, it, we've got to say that it's um, that it's that it's um, blocking that it's actually blocking the doorway with more than a more than a tefach. Um, the, with less with less than a tefach, that that it's actually filling filling the doorway. That's how, you've got a big clear over here that's that's blocking the doorway because otherwise the the, the, the second part of the of the mission isn't going to make sense. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so if if Tume is inside the kli, the the house the house remains tower because it, it, the Tume wants to escape, um, and the way it's going to escape is through the side that's going outside the house. It's it wants to go out, not in. Okay, that's what right. we always say. So there's no need for the tumor to go inside the house in order to escape. Whereas if the entire mouth was inside the house, there'd be no way to for it to escape other than through the house. Okay, but since it's partially in the in the doorway, since it sits in the doorway, it'll go out through uh, through that exit over there. Okay, um, Bias Tower. Tumor Bias. What happens if there's tumor inside the house? Now the tumor wants to get out through the out of the house, so it's going to want to go through the doorway. And you've got this key blocking it in the doorway. Now, if the key was just a little thing that was uh, hanging up on the, you know, just just pushed up against the top of the doorway, it could get out through un underneath, and that would, uh, you know, that chora would be fine. So, but the Mishnah says It's saying that that it actually does become tame. Why? Because um, the tumah has got to get through it, which means it, it must be blocking the whole doorway if the tumah has to get through it in order to get out. So therefore, oh. what's inside it becomes tamish um, 
And so uh, the tum the tumma has to go through it, and therefore it um, it will also it will also become tame even though it's closed, which is analogous to the situation where um, if you're inside if you're inside a house, let's say, let's just not try and understand this. If if there's there are two rooms in the house, or an inner room, an outer room, and the outside, okay. And let's say the mace is inside the inner room, and the door is closed. So you'd say, okay, so the outer room, uh, the outer room, you, you know, is protected from tumor because the door is closed. And you say, no, it doesn't work like that because the tumor's got to get out. And even though the door is closed, the tumor's going to go out through that doorway. Therefore, the door is kilo. It's not there. Boom, out it goes. So the same thing over here, where you've got the tumor inside the house. And the clee is blocking the doorway. So even though it's blocked, you say it's kilu, it's not blocked because the tumor's got to get out. And therefore it goes it, through, therefore it, it penetrates straight through the key. If the door is closed, flush with the bottom of the floor, yes, all around. Yes. How does the tumor get out then? If there's no way for it to get out, so it just go through the door. So it, it bashes down the door effectively. The tumor just knocks down the door. Uh-huh. In the okay. other in the other circumstance, like let's say you've got you've got the inner room and the outer room and, uh, and the outside. If the tumor's in the if the tumor's in the outer room, and the door to the inner room is closed, then the inner room is protected because the tumor doesn't have to go, in, right? to go in. Right, wants to go out. Right, wants to go out. But if it's the other right. way around, it's going to bash down the door to get out. Uh, I thought I thought there was maybe less than the tefak or a tefak that on the bottom of the door doesn't close all the way, then it would get out that that's way. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's uh, once the uh, once the tumor needs to get out, it'll bash down whatever's in its way. Think of it that way. It's like, you know, the incredible. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't need to bash down anything that it doesn't have to. But if it has to, it'll bash it down. Okay. So it's the same thing over here with this key that's blocking the doorway. Okay, Yud Aleph. Haisa muta al tidab avir. Now it's an interesting thing that happens over here in the in the in the next Mishnah is that we we we've dealt with all the difficult cases and now we come to the easy cases. Uh, okay, we, we, because we had this, this pre previously we had all the configurations of uh, what happens if it's if it's with if it's in conjunction with the house and whatever. I don't know why the editor of the Mishnayos decided to put these ones after the more complicated cases because now you look at these and think, well, this is really obvious because we've already dealt with all these other cases. So okay, but let's see them. Hi, Samutal Tidabavir. So it's sitting on its side. Uh, so this key is lying on its side outdoors. And there's no house involved. Kazais mina meis nasum takteha. So your kazais is underneath it. So what's going to happen? Or al gaba, or on top of it. Koshu kenega kazais takteha vegaba tame. So again, it, it, the the tumor breaks through, but um, but since the kli itself is impervious to tumor, it's it's a clay vessel. It's not a it's not earth, it's not called earth, earthenware. It's it's adama. It's, it's sun baked. So therefore, it's not. It's, it's not susceptible to tumor, therefore it protects its interior, but it can't scream because it's a clear. It can't, so, so it can't stop the tumor getting 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 around it. And so it's just that little gap over there. So it's it's exactly what we saw in the in in the previous configuration, except there's no house involved. Okay, and anything that's not in, in front of it, tocha tahor, and also the interior of the clear is also tahor. Uh, However, if the tumor is inside the clear. Then the upper, then the upper um, wall of the of the kli acts as an ore hell because there's more than because there's more than a tefak inside the kli. Okay, so that so that upper that upper level acts as a acts as an ore hell to spread the tumor, and remember it can spread but it can't screen. So once it's spreading, it also it also goes up and down all the way. Okay. Um, so now the the this kli is propped up. Maybe uh, uh, it's it's propped up by a tefach, so now it's got an ohel underneath it. Tuma tachteha or al gaba, if the tuma is underneath it or on top of it, hakol tame eratocha. Then, then it forms. Then even if the tuma is underneath it, it forms an ohel underneath in order to spread the tuma, and it can't block the tuma. So boom, everything gets becomes tame except for the interior. Because the interior still is protected. It's just that the tumma leaps around it and carries on up and down. The socha, if the tumma is inside it, once again, hakol tame, because the upper wall of the of the is is the is is the ohel to spread it, but cannot block it. The medvar memorim, when is the sub is manchi kli? This is when it's when it is actually a functional kli. I said pachusa or pachukha pakash. Once again, if it's a 
Um, if it's a broken key that's been stuffed with straw in order to make it into a, an OHEL, basically. So now it functions as an OHEL. Since it's no longer a functional key, it becomes a full OHEL that can also screen. Okay, or Mahzekes Arbeim Sa'a. Suddenly we add an extra little dimension of account of that it's uh, it possibly it's uh, maybe it's a, a, a key of large dimensions, which um, is which itself can form uh, can can form an OHEL if it's if it's forty Sa'a. As the as according to the Chachamim who um, who who are talking about uh, we saw in a previous mission about the the Kli that, that that's big enough. Um, who were they arguing with? I don't remember who they were arguing with. Uh, so, uh, and there's a Machlokes Rabbi Meir and Chachamim about this. Okay. Um, anyway, Kazais Menames Nasun Tachteha. Now, if a Kazais Menames is sitting is sitting directly underneath this Kli. Then, since since this kli itself can it, it, it uh, can be an ohel to screen tumma, then it does block the tumma from going up, and the tumma can only go down. Al gaba, what if the kli is on top of it? Then connecto adarakia tame. Then only above it, uh, above after the shemaim is tame. The socha, what if the if the tumma is inside the kli? Ain tame elatocha. Then only what's inside the kli is tame because it because it screens. Once it once it can screen. It can screen. It'll it. screen and it'll screen. Okay. Haisa gavon min ayat tefach. Again, if it's elevated above the ground by tefach, tumah tachteha. If the tumah is underneath it, then underneath it is tameh. Besocha. If if it's inside, then the, only the inside is tameh. Al gaba. And if it's on top, then there's no oil coming into play except screening downwards. So then only upwards, up to shemaim is tameh. These cases are all, um, you know, very self-evident once you've been through all the more difficult cases of the house. So it is. A, it's a curiosity, and and we see this many times in Mishnah, where um, where like the the basic principles are taught after you've learned all the complicated stuff. I don't understand it, but uh, it happens many times. And uh, who am I to argue with uh, with with the um, Rabbi Odanasi? Anyway, let's go back to uh, Perik Vav Mishnah. Oh. There is too much between the joist and the underneath. It is very, it's a very thin covering. If there's a handbreadth of empty space, everything becomes tame. And if there's no handbreadth of empty space, the tumor is considered occluded. If the tumor is noticeable within the lower story, the lower story becomes tame, whether or not there's a cube handbreadth of empty space. A wall that resulted from excavation is ruled as a garlic peel. How so? There is a wall between two recesses or between two underground chambers. If Tuma is in the in the up, open area of the catacomb, and there are utensils in the wall. They are covered very thinly. Uh, the utensils remain tahor. If Tuma is in the wall, covered very thinly, and in the open areas there are two utensils. The utensils, utensils remain tahor, and the Tuma is underneath a pile of pillar. Tuma penetrates upward and downward. Utensils that are air that are beneath the capital remain tahor. Rabbi Yochanan Manuri declares them tame. In a case where the tuma and the utensils are beneath the capital, if there is a space of a handbreadth, the utensils are tummy, but if not, they remain tahu. Two wall closets are one beside the other or one above the other. One of the closets is open, it becomes tummy, and so does the house, while the other remains closed, it remains tahu. Uh, however, if the door is closed, the wall closets are treated as if there are empty spaces, in, there are no empty spaces inside them at all, and they are ruled half and half to make the house tummy. Okay. Okay. That's five. There are three handheads. The handhead of a young woman is susceptible to becoming tummy with midges tumor. The handhead of an old woman is susceptible to becoming tummy with corpse tumor. And the handhead of one who gets out goes out is, is tahor from any sort of kuma, form of kuma tumor. There are three boxes regarding a worn out box that is one packed onto a sound one. We follow the status of the sound one. If one punch a small pass a small box onto a large one, we follow the status of the large one. If they were equal, we follow the status of the interior box. If Shimon says regarding the pan of a balance scale that one packs onto the bottom of the boiler, if you patch it on the inner surface of the boiler, the boiler is tummy. But if you attach it on the outer surface of the boiler, the boiler is tahu. If one patches the pan onto the side of the boiler, whether on the inner surface or the outer surface, it is tahu. And... All utensils have an interior and an exterior. I'm sorry. All utensils have an exterior and an interior, such as pillows, mattresses, sacks, and uh, marfustin. These are the words of Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Meir says, any utensil that has hoops has an exterior and an interior. But any utensil that does not have hoops, loops do not have an exterior and an interior. 
a table and a dochlugi, you have an exterior and an interior. These are the words of Rabbi Yehuda. And Mayor says they have no exterior and so no tray, and so to a tray without a bin. Without a rim. Yeah. I said, well, a bin, I said, without a rim. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tom. Okay. Give all hay. The one who won the privilege of the Talmud uh, pulls it and goes to the slaughtering area, and those who won the privilege of carrying the limbs follow him. The slaughtering area was located to the north of the altar, and on it the right dwarf pillars, and the spale of cedar was on top of them. And iron hooks were set into the cedar, lock, cedar blocks, and there were three sets of hooks for each and every one, from which they would hang the animals and skin them upon marble tables that stood between the pillars. The ones who won the privilege to clear the ashes from the inner altar and from the menorah would proceed, and four vessels were in their hands, the basket, the jug, and the two keys. The basket is similar to a large tarkav, tarkav vessel made of gold. It holds two calves and a half. And the jug is similar to a large pitcher made of gold. And regarding the two keys, there is one that he thrusts through the armpit and one that he thrusts that opens quickly. He came to the northern uh, minor doorway. The great gate had two minor doorways, one on the north and one on the south. This, the one to the south, no man ever entered through it. And the reason for this is explained by the prophet Kesko. Uh, Hashem said to me, this gate shall be closed. It shall not be opened. The man shall not come through it because Hashem, the God of Israel, comes through it and it shall remain closed. He took the key and opened the minor doorway and entered the cell and from the cell to the haikal until he reached the great gate. When he reached the great gate, he removed the bolts and the locks and opened it. The slaughterer would, then, would not slaughter until he heard the sound of the great gate being op opened. And it goes. Okay, it's Rib Sodik testified concerning flowing spring water that one channel with a walnut leaf that they are fit. There was an incident in Hala, Hala that the, an incident brought before the court to the chamber of Yun Stone and they ruled the water fit. Rib Shua said, and Rib Gachem Mila of Hadar testified a jug, jug regarding, um, regarding a jug of Kato's ashes that were placed upon his sheriffs. That the ashes are tummy, but Rabbi Elia rules the ashes tahu. Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Pap, uh, Papa Papaya said uh, concerning the offspring of a sh shalaman that one should offer it as a shalaman. Rabbi Elia said that the offspring of a shalaman is not offered. Hold on, hold on. I think you skipped a page there. I, I did skip a page. I skipped, I, um, yes, I did. Going back to um, uh, hey. Rabbi Pius testified regarding one who declared two terms of the dearest and shame for the first. First and zero on thirty day thirty, then he shaves for the second day on day sixty. But if he saved shaved on the day sixty minus one, he has to charge his obligation because day thirty is record for him in the count. Okay, uh Vav. But Yeshua sure Rebbe Pius testified concerning the offering of Shlomin that at one could offer it as a Shlomin. For Reb Eliezer said that this offering of Shlomin may not is not offered as a Shlomin, but then the Prophet say it is offered, it is offered. The Papa said, I testify that we have a cow. That was a shlomin sacrifice, and we ate it on Pesach, and we ate it offspring as a shlomin on the festival. They okay. testified about this. That's it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay. Giga. Go on. Yeah. Okay, Alep. Alep, Alep. All our brides in Ria, except for a deaf person, an imbecile, a minor, and a person of undetermined sex, a Hezbollahite woman, Slaves who have not been freed, the lame, the blind, the infirm, the aging, and one who is unable to ascend by foot. Well, who is deemed a minor? One cannot ride on one who cannot whoever cannot ride on his father's shoulders and send from Jerusalem to the Temple Mount. These are the words of Rabbi Shama. Basil says, Whenever whoever cannot hold his father's head is sent from Jerusalem, Jerusalem to the Temple Mount, for the verse states three pil pilgrimages. Pil pilgrimages. Uh dollar. No base. Beis Shammai says that Oleus and Ria must be worth at least two silver miles and the Shalom Tegia at least one silver ma. Beis Shammai said the Oleus and Ria must be worth at least one silver ma and the, um, the Shalom Tegia at least two. All Oleus which are not obligatory may be brought during Kolomoid and all Oleus may be brought only from unconsecrated funds. A Shalom may be purchased with tithe money. Concerning the Kagiga brought on the first day of Pesach, Beis Shammai says it may be purchased only with the unconsecrated money but he still says it may be purchased with tithe money. Okay. And um, some okay. Lion. Okay. Um, a dollar. A vine plant in a wine presser or a clap is granted a tillage base. A woman may not sow the rest. But Yoshi says that there are not four cubits, one may not bring seeds there. One may not one may sow in a house located in a vineyard. 
If one plants vegetables or retains them in a vineyard, he retains his 40, forbidden 45 vines. When? If they are planted four or five apart. If they were planted six or seven apart, he renders forbidden 16 cubits in every direction in a circle, not in a square. And if one sees vegetables in a vineyard and declares, I will pluck it when I get to it, it is permitted. I will pluck when I return. If he increased it by a 200, it is forbidden. Okay, and we are done. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great, great day. And I'll see you on tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we will. Bye.